Hey friends, welcome back. So in today's video, we're gonna review the Carol Bike, which features power output as an objective measurement to improve your fitness. So we're about three seconds away from an all-out sprint. So here we go. Ah, 960, 991 was where I was going, <laughs> 960. That's what keeps you coming back. If you guys wanna beat your records, I was 30 watts away. Welcome back. So what we're gonna to do today is do a quick workout on the curl bike and review what makes this bike unique and different from a lot of the other at-home fitness equipment, particularly when it comes to aerobics or fat burning. Now, Carol is an exercise bike that uses an algorithm to optimize for your power. So power is a direct measurement of how much effort or watts you're putting into whatever movement that you are doing. Now, that's why I like recommending, you know, using power as opposed to calories as opposed to heart rate because it's very objective. Your heart rate can change, the amount of calories that you burn in a workout can change, Power does not change. It's objective from person to person. So this algorithm, this technology focuses just on power or wattages. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do just a two 20 second sprint workout. So I just started. So it's gonna warm up with a two minute warm up. Now what's cool about this bike is when you first get it, and I'll put links below to their website and a little coupon for you as well. But when you first get the bike, you do five test workouts. And these workouts, essentially you're doing uh, two 10 second sprints all out and then followed by a rest period and, the, and, uh, and so on. So these two test sprints, what they do is they test your power. So once they establish your baseline power, which again is, is in the units of wattage, it's a direct measurement, then it customizes your power goals and your thresholds for your workouts. So you're progressively increasing based upon wattage to do a short duration, high intensity interval uh, training. And again, this is way more time efficient. Why should you do short duration, high intensity intervals as opposed to you know, these long steady state workouts? Number one, you deplete glycogen very quickly, okay? So when you deplete glycogen, you drop insulin, you improve insulin sensitivity. Short sprint, high intensity interval workout can improve insulin sensitivity by up to 28%. So a short duration workout, what, is it, what it essentially will do is it's way more time efficient, okay? So you'll have to do a 45 minute workout to sort of get the same benefits that you would during a very short duration, high intensity interval workout. Okay, so we're, we're easy here doing, you know, 200 watts, nothing major. We have 13 seconds, we're gonna do a sprint, okay? So it's a 20 second sprint. So this is a long sprint. I'm gonna to try to average about 500 watts. So it's gearing up. The algorithm's picking up. So it's getting more intense. So right now it's at 747 watts, 14 seconds. So when you're sprinting, you wanna keep your heels down. You get more power out. Seven more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna be out of breath. But I'll share with you guys what this screen looks like. It's pretty cool. So that was the start of the sprint. Got up to 746 watts, maintained it for about 13, 14 seconds. The last three started to decline. So 20 seconds of work, still out of breath, depleted glycogen. Haven't yet eaten today, just had some MCT oil in my coffee. But my heart rate's only at 126 beats per minute. Because during those intervals, you really put out a lot of power. Now again, 90 seconds left until the next sprint. So in between these sprints, you don't wanna crush it. You're recovering, focus on nose breathing. So as I was saying, when you're sprinting, this is your most powerful stroke. So see how my heel's down? I used to race bikes. So a lot of people, they have their toes down like that. If you're going for power, you wanna dig in like you're scooping. In fact, and you can wear real cleats, but you wanna dig down. Now for the longer sprints, I'm in the saddle. 
which I'll probably do on this one, but I'll get up and just go for it because there's a leaderboard throughout the world and there's some people that are ahead of me and I'm trying to get up there. So anyway, five seconds, so start to increase. So the algorithm kicks in, it's getting harder because it knows my power output. That's 746 watts. 12 more seconds. You can feel the burn. Nine more seconds. So five, three, two, one. Whew. All right, three minutes recovery. So what I like to make sure is that these are roughly the same, you know, in terms of the intensity. That's what's nice to look for here. So, you know, I dropped off a little bit more here, second sprint, but you wanna have a consistent output. You wouldn't want to jump up and then drop back down. So the algorithm is designed to enable this to maintain. So it's putting out equal sort of resistance so that the drop off isn't severe. But anyway, you want them to match, you know. Okay, so just a minute left here. My heart rate's recovering. It's about 119 beats per, per minute here. So if you think about how much effort we put in here, it was 40 seconds of very intense effort and we're done, okay? So to get that same amount of power output, of adaptations to both the muscles in my legs, my heart, my cardiovascular and aerobic system, I would have had to have biked for 40, five minutes. So I don't know about you, but I know you're sure on time just like I am with your family, your business, your other obligations. I'm way more inclined to do 40 seconds of all out ballistic work. So called a high intensity interval training session versus 45 minutes. And then as we cool down here, you know, what I've noticed through doing this now for about two weeks, is my cardio has definitely improved. We went for a mountain bike ride yesterday and sprinting all around, doing some loops. Felt like it could really handle a lot more hills and so forth. So three, three seconds left, the workout's done. Eight minutes, okay? So if I look here, so 746 peak watts. Again, this was a 20 second sprint. If it was a 10 second sprint, that peak would be higher because I would have given it all an all out effort. I went pretty hard but 10 seconds is a lot shorter than 20. So it gives you your octane score, which is very similar to VO2 max. So that's your aerobic capacity and so forth. It looks at calories burned, 191 calories. Again, that's like two sodas or something. I don't know what, but that's a decent amount of calories. Not that you, you don't want to focus on that. Peak heart rate, wattage and all that. So you hit save. Okay, so here's what's cool about this. So here's all your workouts. And let's look at peak power, because power, again, is very objective. This is what matters, okay? So we wanna look at power. Power is what really matters. And during this particular workout, again, it was a little bit longer, two 20 second sprints. So the wattage, you know, my, the peak wattage here was 894 watts, but during the workout, it averaged out to be about 744 watts. So this shows you all your data, which is pretty cool for your different rides, you know, for your Energizer rides. I haven't done a fat burning ride before. I've done some free rides in the ramp up, but it syncs with your Wi-Fi. So if we go to the ramp up, so here's how it calculates with the algorithm, you know, what your rides should be. So it's looking at your peak power. So on this particular ride, it looked like, or well, that was a couple days ago, peak power was 928 watts. I was doing it every day, so you can actually see the power went up to 991. It's like, yes, I gotta break a thousand. And I kept declining, so I was doing it every day. So you wanna do this maybe three or four days a week. But again, we're talking, friends, about 20 to 40 seconds of work. Now, if you do the fat burning mode, it's a 15 second sprint followed by 30 seconds recovery, 15 second sprint, 30 seconds of recovery for I think 10 minutes. So fat burning would be, the mo would be really intense. You might wanna do that two days a week, that's pretty intense. But here's what's cool about this, is they have trends in the leaderboard, okay? So the Octane score, so there's me, 44 out of however many users. I like to go the power, because again, power is what matters. 
peak power, okay? So this guy, we're going for you, Michael. So he's at 1300 watts, right? My peak power, I think was like 991, something like that. But you can see a lot of people clump right around 11, 1200, which is, that's intense. So you can also link up with your friends, peak power per pound. So that's, you know, if you want to win the Tour de France, your peak power output needs to be around five watts, 5.7 watts per kilo, I think. So literally what coaches will do in the Tour de France is do power output testing per pound. So the lighter you are and the more power you can output literally determines how well you'll do in a grand tour, like, you know, Tour de Landers or the Giro d'Italia or Tour de France. So anyway, pretty cool bike. I, you know, we've liked it. My daughter goes on here all the time. She's almost maxing out at 300 watts at nine years old. So that's really cool. And because she sees that, she's trying to beat her mom. Her mom was doing like 410 watts. So she's actually not that far off. 100 watts is very trainable. So it's fun, like we do this before school. You can gamify it, it shows you trends. And again, the most important thing here, friends, it's a time efficient. So many people say, I would work out, but I don't have the time. You have 40 seconds in your day to do a hard workout, friends. If you don't have 40 seconds to do a hard workout, I don't know what you're doing with your time. You need to be better with your time with all due respect. But again, this bike is really unique because you do those five ramp up rides, it determines your power goals and then uses the algorithm to customize the resistance at the wheel so that when you do your sprints, it's challenging you every time based upon that. So I think it's unique. Now, I know there's other products on the market. To be fair, I haven't tried a lot of those other products, but the, the downside to those other products, because I have family and friends that have those and clients, is you can you know, sort of come into a, a post live workout or during a live workout, you see the leaderboard, you're going super hard for a long period of time. That's going to dig you into an overtraining hole. Again, some people need that. Some people have the sort of a constitution to go hard all the time. I will tell you as a former bike racer, when I went hard all the time, my testosterone dropped, my DHA dropped, I got depressed, I lost muscle mass. So harder for extended long duration workouts is not always good. This is where something like the Carol comes in where you're doing short duration, very customized workouts based upon your current fitness level and where your trend's going. And it's always optimize, optimizing with the algorithm. So I like it as a heart rate monitor. Again, I just have my weightlifting shoes on here, my chucks, but if you wanna use actual sort of bike shoes and clip-ins, you probably ramp up two to 5% in your power because you're just that much more efficient with the pedal stroke. When you're doing your intervals, you really want to focus on digging in with that heel. Can I see a lot? Even my wife, I was telling her, she's digging in with her toe. So when you're coming down and scooping back up, dig down with your heel. So you practice digging and that's working your hamstring too, which is a problem area for a lot of people. But I'm a huge fan of the curl bike. My goal here in the next six months, try and be up in that top 10 or whatever. Cause 1300 Watts, like I said, I've done that before. And that's what keeps me going. You know, it's kind of nice. You, you have a target to aim for. So, you know, again, there's the elliptical machines, there's all these machines, but they're not objectively measuring watts. So whatever you decide to do when you go and do your workouts, cardio, maybe if the curl bike is not right for you, at least train using watts. Okay. And use that as your, your objective measurement. But I'm a big fan. What I'll do is link some of the research that Carol has and link a coupon code below. I would highly recommend checking it out. Small form factor. We actually have it in our living room when we're bored as a family, because we don't watch TV a lot or watch movies or whatever. We'll do some sprints and see, where, you know, try and compete with each other. So I like it. It's got us a lot more active. And we just went on a mountain bike ride as we're close here. As we're closing here, we just went on a mountain bike ride yesterday with my daughter. And after about 10 days of having this and utilizing it, her fitness has improved out of all of the three of us much more noticeably. Even my wife was like, oh my gosh, Inez was crushing me on the bike, Mike. What? She's getting so much faster. And honestly, it's from doing these high intensity sprints that have really improved her aerobic fitness. So thank you, Carol, for uh, building a great product. Please check out the link in the coupon code below where you can learn more about the Carol bike. And in closing, focus on intensity, not volume or duration when it comes to your cardio and your training in general. Shorter high intensity blocks are gonna improve your fitness and your 
ability to improve various parameters of your metabolism in a more time efficient manner compared to doing extended steady state cardio. So appreciate you all tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you did and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.